The final portion of this tutorial is going to cover dimensioning. Uh, adding dimensions is very easy in AutoCAD. Getting a dimension style to look right and work right is actually the tricky part. So we'll start with that. Use the command D. So it's D and return. And this launches uh, Dimension Style Manager. So this is the way AutoCAD's thinking you want to set up your dimensions. Now, firstly, don't like the arrows. They're not very clear architecturally. And secondly, it's using commas instead of full stops for uh, for the spacer. And it's color-wise, everything will end up too heavy. The lines will be very heavy using our our pen settings file. So this needs this needs a bit of attention. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll change to the standard style first, and then we'll create a new one. And it can be a copy of the standard one. That's hap I'm happy about that. So we'll call this Dims Basic. Okay, I keep doing everything in lowercase when I shouldn't. Okay, Dims Basic, and continue. Now, what we'll do first is actually jump to the second tab along, Symbols and Arrows, and I'm just going to change it to Architectural Ticks. Okay, and I'm going to make these a size of 1.5. Okay, we'll mark the centers of circles with a size of 1.5 as well. Okay, the preview here goes crazy until everything has been established. A dimension break size of 0.125. Okay, I'm happy to leave the rest of the things there or as they are. I'll jump back now to the lines. Now the color of the lines, I don't want these to be very strong. So red equals a thin line in our pen settings. Okay, and we will extend beyond the ticks by a distance of 1.5 baseline spacing 1.5 extension lines these will be red as well okay then over on this side I'll extend beyond the dim lines by 1 and the offset from the origin 1 Right, let's go to the text now and things will start to look a bit more usable. The text style, this is where we'll use our DIMS standard, DIMS text style that we created earlier. And the color for the text, I will go for green this time. Okay, and text height, this is the one that's, that's basically going to make the biggest difference. Uh, we'll go for a height of two. So it's two millimeters. Oh, there we go. We've got a text. We've got a dimension style that looks pretty good now. Okay. Um, positioning of the text is important. Okay. We'll have both of these centered, uh, but I do want my text aligned with the dimension line. You see, at the moment they're all showing horizontal. Aligned with the dimension line looks much tidier. And offset from the dim line, so this pushes it away from the dimension line. An offset of one. Okay, just click in another box and you'll see that take that happen. Okay, and then we'll go to the fitting. We don't know, we don't make any changes on fit actually. Um, we'll go to primary units and the unit format. Is decimal precision only needs to be to two to one decimal place for for dimensions for millimeters. Uh, nobody can measure anything smaller than a tenth of a millimeter. Okay, we uh, can suppress the trailing zeros. This is useful; it keeps the numbers a bit smaller. Uh, degrees, I would increase the accuracy on the precision on those have those maybe to two decimal places but also suppress any trailing zeros so that should 
be okay. Let's just have a quick look. Symbols and arrows. Da, 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 da. I think we're okay. That looks probably a bit nicer actually. Text placement above the dimension line. I think we'll go with that. Right, so that's our, our, our style defined. So I'll click OK and that's ready to, ready to use. Okay, it's nice and sharp. The, the dimension, the extension lines are pulled away from the object and so you don't get them confused with the actual object that you're, you're, you're measuring. Okay, now you can put dimensions in paper space, but I prefer to add my dimensions to model space. Um, if I move part of the plan, I know my dimension is going to go with it. Um, if I send the drawing to somebody, I know they're going to get the dimensions. If they're in a layout, it's not 100% certain. Okay, so as I say, dimensioning is quite is actually the easy bit. So let's add uh, a linear... A, a, a horizontal dimension along the length of the building. Let's see what it looks like. So you, you invoke the command with dim and then I want to do a horizontal dimension. So it's dim return hor return. Ooh, I just forgot. We need to create a layer for our dimensions. So let's do that just now. Create a new layer. Let's call it dims. Uh, it doesn't really matter what color this is because the dimension colors are set up in the style. But I'll just make it white for the sake of it. But I will make it current. Okay, so dim return hor return. So it will only give me the horizontal distance. So let's go from the corner of the building. And we can roll the mouse out. It lets us do this transparently. A slide over to this corner. Okay, and then we've got a red line. Now the red line is your actual dimension line and it's waiting for me to confirm how far away from the building I want it drawn. So let's say I'll, I'll place it here. Okay, then jumps to your command line and says this is what I've measured. Okay, so you press return. If you overrule that, you won't be able to tell later on which dimensions you've overruled, so it gets very dangerous. Okay, so my dimension's been added, but it's there somewhere. Oh, look at him, he's tiny. Okay, minuscule. Now the, the, the dimension, the overall size of the dimensions is controlled by what's called a dim scale. And that really wants to be suited to your final output scale. So for, for dimensions to be visible in this viewport, the 1 to 500 viewport, I need the dim scale to be 500. So it bumps them up 500 times. So dim scale, the moment it's 1, we want to set it to 500. Okay, now we update the dimension that's there. So dim return, up, return. Pick the dimension and return. That's more like it. I can see the number now. Now from this distance, I can see some little white dots. There's one there, there's one there, and there's two that we can't see because they're white dots on top of white. But there's another one here, and there's another one there. Now these are called your def points. They're the defining points for the dimension. And because we've added a dimension to the drawing, the layer def points will now be in this drawing. It can't be purged, and you can't rename it. It has a an, kind of an indelible link to layer zero. So watch that you don't freeze layer zero, because uh, you might find your dimensions misbehave. So if I click if I escape the, the command and just click on a dimension, you see what happens. The grips are actually identifying where the dim, where the uh, def points are. Okay, if you move a def point, see the number changes. If you had overruled that dimension, it wouldn't automatically adjust if you moved the def point. Okay, if I change this def point, 
it's basically just stretching the dimension out further away from the building okay so that one doesn't have an impact on the number but the other one does okay so either of these does you also see there's a grip here at the number it allows you to to move things around again okay now if you wanted to change where the text is you can as well and you do that via dim edit and this just lets you this should just let you move or alter the text let's try that again I think I ended up in just a normal text editing there so it's dim edit right, it's just taking the line as well now uh, it's not being not doing what I expected it to do so I'll just press escape okay so that's a horizontal dimension let's try and put on a vertical dimension now so instead of dim hor we use ver so I'm still in the dimension command at the moment and I'll pick a point here and a point here and so it's just giving me the vertical size between those two points now try when you're placing dimensions try and do it tidy so if I've chosen that distance away from there I would try and match it on this side that's the measurement you press return okay so you get these looking kind of equal distance things look much tidier now these two commands of there is there's a new version of adding linear dimensions and this one doesn't start inside the dim command so you press escape and just try dim linear all one word dim linear okay so let's let's say we're going to go from this corner up to the corner here okay so I just pick the two points that I'm interested in okay and then depending where I move my cursor it will either give me the horizontal size or the vertical size so if I wanted to, to add another vertical size in line with this one I just look for the end of the line there and it looks as if I continued it but I didn't it was a completely different command okay so dim linear is trying to kind of, kind of take the place of this these two dim hor and dim ver uh, but it's up to you which one you want to, to to use okay there's a few other dimension ways of adding dimensions we could add an aligned dimension that's dim return ally short for aligned so let's say we want to go find the length of these concrete panels I'll go from that endpoint to this one okay and the dimension is in line with the panel accept the, the text watch for numbers clashing with lines you can edit that away maybe try and bring it a bit closer or take it away just so that the line and the number are still legible okay remember this is your def point so moving that point makes that dimension go crazy okay as I say these are the def points and these are the ones that have the big impact on the dimension okay we've got a, an, an angle situation here so let's try and add a dimension for an angle so it's dim return ang return and you just pick two items doesn't matter if it's inside a polyline or anything the, the command still works quite neatly and you move around and it gives you whichever angle you're trying to measure externals you know the included angle or whatever it's you decide where you want to place the dimension line so I'll pick a position for the dimension line the number gets left here press return and then I can reposition okay um, we have dim radius so it's dim rad and dim diameter dim dia if you want if you have circular objects that you're wanting to work with um, 
the, the the last one is a slight is a variation on a dimension it's called a leader so if you do dim return l return and this kicks off a leader so let's say i was just wanting to to bring a, somebody's notice that this was a landing okay i i actually finished the leader i, I kind of go backwards basically the arrowhead is first so that's where i want the arrowhead to start so i click then my arrow is going to be pointing from here so you can see the arrow now if i put ortho on now i'll get a straight line segment click again and then press return and it gives you the chance to enter some text so the last number that was entered into the system was the angle here 109.27 but it's rounded it to 109.3 but i just start typing so i could just write stair landing press return and it drops in a note it's a bit crude they're a bit big but uh, useful in occasions if you want to just draw somebody's attention to something or maybe you're even pointing at a dimension saying this is you know approximate or something like that you could add in okay so that last thing on dimensioning is how you, how do you continue dimensions um, so let's say we were, we we're going to dimension some of these grids okay so I'll put in a horizontal dimension first so I'll go from midpoint to midpoint okay set my position enter for the text but then I use the word cont c-o-n-t and return and then I can carry on with the next dimension position so I'll take the midpoint there and return c-o-n-t let's go to the midpoint of this one return c-o-n-t and return you get the idea so it, uh, it's not so easy to do afterwards um, getting continuous dimensions like that is, is easier to put in you know and as you do them rather than trying to do it afterwards and if you're doing it afterwards then let's let's just show you so you do dim horizontal go from midpoint here to midpoint there and then pick an end point on one of these lines or a midpoint to line up with and return okay these dimensions don't know they're in any series or sequence or anything they all they're all actually individual dimensions so you know you could delete one and it wouldn't affect the rest okay and you can take a, a grip and move its position so just be very careful when you're adding dimensions make sure you are picking the right points um, but it's it's fairly easy it's fairly easy to do so we've been adding dimensions on our 1 to 500 plan and these would be, look crazy on our 1 to uh, on our 1 to 75 viewport so let's just bring back any layers that we've got turned off so the electrics were turned off and the areas have been turned off so all the layers are on but we're going to allow the dimensions to be seen in this viewport but not this one so we double click inside here and layer dims gets frozen there but the dimensions are still visible in this viewport viewports not quite big enough to show the dimensions so I'll just make it a wee bit bigger like that so that's basically the the kind of end of this this uh, this short course I hope it's uh, been useful uh, a lot of these points are covered in some of my other videos but um, this one kind of pulls things together it's just gen kind of general logistics of using using AutoCAD and covering some of the, the trickier points that we don't cover in tutorials that are basically just drawing orientated okay all the best and uh, speak to you soon